So what we're doing this morning is we're going to show you how to fit your, correctly fit your new uh, larger horizontal wasp coils onto the vertical. But firstly, make sure that the socket here is nice and clean and there's no muck in there. Have a good look at your foil. If you've previously glued your foil, you may have glue residue around the stump or around the line taken by the edge of the aluminium. You want to remove all that and start with a nice clean surface. So firstly, take your foil, sit it on, and if necessary, Give it a gentle tap to the, to the rubber mallet to ensure that it all sits on. Once you're happy that it's all sitting on, there's no need at this stage to put the bolt in because with these large foils, it's very important that you get rid of any wobble that is generated through the slight um, uh, looseness of fit between the stump and the socket because if you don't do something about this, you'll be relying wholly on the, on the bolt, the head of the bolt, to uh, keep the two parts together tightly, and that could cause undue fatigue on the bolt, which results in the head of the bolt uh, breaking off and the potential for your horizontal to sink to the bottom. So take some either some uh, uh, thickened epoxy, um, you can see here it's not going to drip off the stick. So that's just epoxy resin which has added, had um, uh, some um, thickening agent added to it. Or you could use um, uh, some five minute arrow dot. That also works fine. So once you've got your second epoxy, you don't need a great deal because the, the small gap that we, we're experiencing is not very and thick. The important thing to note is that this section here where it tails, where the angle changes and it tails off, is to allow the flap to move. Now don't go getting any glue too close to the, to the change in angle because if any glue seeps into the, uh, the flap uh, hinge section, it can cause an obstruction and you won't get full movement of your flap. So be very careful not to put the glue anywhere near that section. Okay, now once you've applied some to the base of the vertical, it's also a good idea just to apply a very small uh, film into the socket, just to ensure that when the two are put, pushed together, the, the glue goes in both directions. Okay, so now take the horizontal, fit it up to the uh, vertical. Tap it on and make sure that you uh, go with a new bolt. Get that in and crank it up nice and tight. Lovely. Take your stick working from back to front. Remove the excess. Again, wiping from back to front. The reason we're doing that is, is obviously so that we don't wipe any glue into our hinge line. And what we want to do now is just to verify that the length of our push rod is correctly adjusted. You'll note that the the push rod no longer needs to be shredded into the uh, the foil. It sits into the little depression in the flap, and that is quite sufficient. It means that in future, changing and swapping your foils, assembling and reassembling of your foils, will be that much easier. But it is important to make sure that we have correct lengths set for our push rod so that we do not overload the system. Now what we like to do is we like to set it up so that when the bell crank is moved all the way to the back, the bell crank will max out in the uh, plastic slot. And that prevents this from being pushed any further back by the um, control system and therefore 
not being able to load up the, or bend the push Now, removing of this grub screw has been difficult for some people. The grub screw is actually glued into position with uh, Loctite and as such can jam and people get into trouble. The trick to removing that is to work it back and forth, back and forth, and you'll feel that it starts to loosen and you can start to unscrew it. And then before you know it, once we've got the grub screw out, what we want to do is twist this around and you'll observe that the push rod is poking through the fork by approximately two and a half millimetres in this particular instance. Now, we've already pre-adjusted this, but what you're trying to achieve is that when this bell crank is pushed back and the flap is fully down, the, the holes for that grub screw line up perfectly. If, for argument's sake, you had a situation where your, um, your alignment looked more like that, then you would simply, with a pair of pliers or somebody, a friend holding the other end, you could then adjust this section here, either in or out, and again, try this until you have achieved that perfect alignment. This also, I have seen a number of people doing correctly. They put Lockta all over the grub screw and then screw it in. What that's actually doing is locking it not only to the to the top connector fork, but also locking it to the to the bell crank. And it's important that it moves on the bell crank. So just put your your um, grub screw into that height, right. to that section which is just protruding. The section protruding is roughly the equivalent uh, in height of the thickness of that top section of fork. So that should ensure that the grub screw is only bonded with the top section of fork and not actually with the bell crank. Wipe off any excess. And that's all you need to do. That's, that's now, you can hear it very positively hitting against the plastic and the flap is fully down.